Good morning, Britain. It's just gone half past six. Welcome to the programme. Thank goodness we've got Rodri Gilbert to bring us some smiles a bit later on because it is a very, very grim morning this morning. If you look at the front page of the Daily Mail, I think they have a question that a lot of people are asking. What the hell did they all die for? They're looking at those who have lost their lives um, from here in the UK, from around the world, and also looking on the government website at the tributes that were paid to them. Today, you would have had to have delivered that. Can you tell us what it's like today? As Charlotte was saying, those awful, awful scenes of people with shotgun fire running for their lives, running to find a way to escape. Um, what's it like where you are? The, um, uh, I'm trying to talk to a camera, but <laughs> and then no you one can't. seems to be on me. In there we go. <laughs> uh, it would be lovely to hear from you um, at home um, as well as we what you think of, is um, enough enough. Tuck it away and say it's happening in another country because, you know, there could be consequences here, like we were saying, not just on a humanitarian level. Well, there will be, but just to, just to give... But also get on involved, the level what of do you terrorism. Think? Do well. let us know what you think. It would be great, it would be great to know, you know, should we walk away or, 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 and just consider that this was a 20-year experiment that went wrong, that people lost their lives on? Or is there something we can do? I mean, I mean Kevin, it's... do you think, with regards to the, the issue of you know, the Taliban then being able to, to mobilise things, Al-Qaeda coming back and, and being able to launch more attacks as a consequence. You know, how much are we at risk? Because yeah. it's fair enough to say, OK, you know, we, we've been in, we did our best, should we just hold our hands up? But actually, this could come back to bite us yeah, the, again, couldn't the, it? The Taliban is... And we're going to be debating uh, gun law after the fallout of that Plymouth shooting. Devastating, devastating. It's cause all sorts of questions of how attacks like this should be treated. Um, so we're going to be debating that. We've also got Rod Gilbert bringing some sunshine and fun uh, this morning as well. You're watching Good Morning Britain on ITV. for tighter and tougher controls on gun licences. Um, would this new guidance be enough? What do you think should be done? There seems to be a, a, a clear decision that we're not going to be able to go back in. What are the options, do you think? Uh, it's... Was there an exit plan and has it not been followed? For 20 years... When... To leave, get home, make mm -hmm. sure she's safe because yeah. the situation is so difficult. Just tell us about her first of all and then we'll, we'll talk to you about your concerns. Um, the mess that's been created, um, it's too late to talk about whether we should have gone in but and we mm -hmm. don't want to undervalue the sacrifice of all those lives lost and all those people injured and living with those injuries here in the UK and in Afghanistan in any way, because they should be proud, shouldn't they, of what they tried to achieve. What, what, where were we six months ago and what are you facing now? I'm concerned about your staff. We've had assurances from the UK that they will get people out. I mean, are you, are you satisfied that that system's going to work? Because obviously there are going to be a huge number of people that have been involved with assisting the British in some form or another, aren't they? They are now potentially at risk, although the Taliban has given assurances about a peaceful transfer of power. Do, do you believe that? What are your concerns about what's going to happen next to the people that you obviously care about? and the repercussions for this country as well. Such a difficult situation. Stay with us. You're watching Good Morning Britain on ITV. Speak to him and to hear his fears about what's going to happen to people on the ground, what's going to happen to his staff if he doesn't get them out what the consequences will be. What, what would you say to people like him, to those that have left behind? Because essentially, they feel like they've been abandoned by the British. And all governments involved in it uh, should hang their head in shame. Why was it not seen? Why was it not predicted? You know, your former defence minister, did you not see that this was going to happen? What was the exit plan? Was there just no exit plan? 
Or did something fundamentally yeah. go wrong? Shotgun licence, uh, the Home Office has said. Sad. Team GB athletes were given an official homecoming at last and a chance to show off their medals with a star-studded concert at Wembley last night. Team GB's performance in Tokyo has been hailed as the greatest achievement in British Olympic history. Of course, the very young team brought home 65 medals. It's great to have that to celebrate, isn't it? Well, the concert was held in front of a live audience. It was made up of the friends and the family of the athletes who weren't able to travel to Tokyo to see their success in person. Chief Executive of the Centre for Countering Digital Hate, Imran Ahmed, and Florence Keane, who is a research fellow in terrorism and political violence. If I can come to you first of all, Florence, I think we saw police in Plymouth very quickly say that Friday's shooting was not an act of terrorism. Um, we can debate whether that was right or not, but presumably that was based on what normally is being classified as, as terrorism. Um, and in a sense, I think the horror for those involved and for the community notwithstanding, there was almost uh, across the country a little bit of a sigh of relief because uh, there was a sense that this wasn't a resurgence of some of the terrible terrorism that, that we've seen in recent events. Afghans running out onto the tarmac to board military flights. That was according to a US official earlier. There's obviously chaotic scenes at the airport. Tens of thousands of people desperately trying to leave. We're now joined by the Defence Secretary, Ben Wallace. Good morning to you. It's not going to be good. We have abandoned the people of Afghanistan, haven't we? We haven't abandoned them. I, 